All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Hello, and welcome to episode 313 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm Ken, I'll be your host today, and joining me today on, the, on this will be Lonnie, St. Lucas, and uh, Daniel, Wheeze on the board. Hi. <laughs> um, and then I think you can go by other names too. I called you the Swede, which you thought was, I was trying to say super weed or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I and, oh, well, if that works for you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't do weed. Uh, I'm not sure. You're Americans. You do a lot of weed, don't you? Uh, <laughs> You're painting with broad strokes already. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't. No, I don't. no. But it's legalized, at least in some states. Well, well, Lonnie drinks let's... a lot of beer. I, mean, I drink, I drink a beer. lot of beer. You know. probably just probably worse for me. But... <laughs> it could be worse. Yeah, yeah, you, it could be worse. So, um, I think there's something wrong this episode today. Something's missing. Wait a minute. Oh, where's our fearless leader? I don't know. I think he he's, doing the, he's doing, he's uh, doing, I believe, the other podcast, uh, which is what we call it. Look, it's rock and roll. That's it. Uh, so he's not, jo- he won't be here today. So you're going to have to deal with us. And so therefore, this is the Anarchist Takeover Show. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to just get right into it. We have a, a various subjects or topics to go over here um so like first show. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a you know off the rails kind of thing here so uh first of all uh kiss kiss news uh anything new come up in the last week regarding kiss Not well i don't i don't really know when it came up but there's a big news uh, regarding europe the european tour has been rescheduled yeah, yeah. so that's a biggie the people over here, they seem to uh, be a bit hesitant, uh, not sure if it's going to actually be a tour. But uh, people are, a lot of people are uh, holding on to their tickets and hoping that there will be a, a tour next year. Yeah, we shall yeah. see on that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I noticed that, that scheduled date. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess nope. there will be, but, you know, who knows what's going who on. Who knows? Right? Nobody sure. knows. But I think if you're going to postpone dates, you're going to have to announce some kind of rescheduled dates at some point and not just tell these people, oh, we're holding on to your money. It's going to be rescheduled without <laughs> some sense of, hey, these are the dates. I mean, it's not – obviously, they're not set in stone, but I mean, I think you – if you're telling people, oh, we're just going to hold on to your money, you at least have to – eventually come up with some kind of dates and not just we're going to hold on to your money indefinitely type thing yeah we're going to hold on to your money and uh, make interest off of it <laughs> right. kind of thing. um i guess the other thing and i think you brought this up earlier uh, yeah about uh, soul station yeah soul station looks like they're in the studio wearing masks and trying to supposedly wrap them wrap things up on on their album and Sounds like we're going to get some Ace news early part of next week with Origins Volume 2. little teaser video came out today. It said July 28th, which is Tuesday. So is that just the first single to come out that day? Or, or you know, probably so, I would imagine. So, so you know, some, some KISS news on the horizon in this I, time of uncertainty, yeah, which is kind of nice. I would assume it's a single first. That's I would think so. That's what they've usually done, I think, at least. For Ace, the other thing about Soul Station is, and I don't know if we brought it up in the prior week's podcast, but about five new songs from Paul are going to be, you know, written songs for that Soul yeah. Station, uh, which I find interesting. Um, uh, I guess, well, you know what, he could write it to fit his current voice, I guess, situation, mm-hmm. uh, either by doing a falsetto or or something else. I think uh, I was thinking that he would either, if he's not going to sing the falsetto, he'll be doing some kind of really lower stuff or uh, a background 
vocal and have someone else possibly sing because they have a number of singers in that band. Yeah, well, when you saw the video they did this band uh, that they did online, I don't remember the name of the song, but uh, it's clear that he can do some vocals when he, he is in the high notes and the very low, low notes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big thing for Paul that he's able to sing, and that makes him even want to do this more, because of course he feels he can't do the Kiss stuff justice anymore. So it must be a good feeling to feel that, man, I can really do this, and uh, it's real, and I'm a real singer once again, because I don't think he likes to mimic his uh, his songs. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Um, otherwise, uh, anybody get anything Kiss-wise, Kiss merchandise? I, I have not. No, no, I have, I have, I have not. That's, we're just that's, that's a good segment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have not. <laughs> I I actually bought some stuff, but nothing, nothing big. A few Kiss tattoos from. 20 years ago from from the official kiss online i, I got a good deal on those okay. I, I don't have the guts to do like lon and put their real tattoos on my body because oh, come on <laughs> have you ever shown your tattoo on the show I, I don't think you've shown it you know the 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 four symbols i've never seen oh, it live it'd be, it'd be a little difficult right now I, I had to work from home today because i i did getting old and I did something to my neck today and I couldn't drive. Uh -oh. I, I try I tried to drive to work this morning. It's like I can't look to my left. I can't drive. So um, today's probably not a good day for me to, to do a lot of sudden movements. So. <laughs> well he has some really cool tattoos. Is it on your like lower side of your lower part of your leg somewhere on your yeah. collar? I thought you were gonna say lower part of my body somewhere. Or we're supposed to say lower part of your leg. <laughs> we don't know what's hiding on the <laughs> well, yeah, I th I know I've seen it. I've seen the uh, picture um, before. It's... No, no, I, I have I have every every living member's um, signature tattooed on my calves. Yeah, yeah. including including Vinny even. So, so yeah, that's a pretty good. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the girls love it. So... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Well. Uh, so let's get into, I guess, some of the topics that uh, um, we had this week. Uh, one, this one was uh, Daniel. You had a topic about the uh, the podcast. Let the you know podcast listeners. Uh, what our favorite YouTube channels the are that we go to? You know our go to channels. Um, why don't you start off with that? Yeah, well, I thought uh, uh, kids fans are looking for new clips or even or old clips all the time. So if you could help them find a few good channels on YouTube, I think it would be a good idea. Uh, mostly, I was looking for ideas from the viewers or listeners, and uh, of course, you you might have a few good good uh, suggestions as well. Because I don't really have a lot of channels that I go to. Lately I've been going to this channel called like VA Rock City One. Mm -hmm. VA City One. Because mainly because he uh, he put up uh, like thirty five old kiss interviews. A lot of uh, revenge era stuff. So uh, and there's not a whole lot of revenge era um, you know radio stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I, most of them I have hadn't heard them before, so uh, it's quite fun. But you know, uh, radio interviews—they are seldom uh, that deep. But it's fun to hear hear the the boys back back in the day uh, talking, and they have fans calling in with questions and so on on some of these radio shows. And I think it's quite fun to you know listen to before you go to sleep or something. So V A Rock City and the hmm. digit what. That's a good one. Yeah, right, Otherwise, I, 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 I was going to give uh, Andrew some credit because um, yeah. right, his channel is quite good. There's not a whole lot on it, but uh, if someone has managed to miss it, he has a channel called The Greatest Show on Earth with his uh, brilliant uh, movies from uh, the, the, the 
this uh, final tour. And uh, I'm just hoping he will continue doing these kind of movies because I think it's one of the best things actually that's been released in, in later years. So all credit to him. Hopefully he, he'll be doing something, you know, early 90s. That, that will be my cup of tea. So we'll yeah. see what happens with that one. He was supposed to be on today, but I don't know what happened. Yeah, we don't know what happened to him. <laughs> Calling him out. Um, yeah, well, uh, I know Andrew's channel. Um, yeah, there's a the few things that he's done. One, the, the Alive 2 kind of era, based yeah. on, on the Live 2 music, uh, where he matched the video up to live you know, concert footage, which was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, very yeah. good. And then, yeah, like you said, there I think there's a Kiss at Midnight. Yeah, there's Kiss at Midnight. And then, then the, the new, newest one about the uh, the end of the road tour and the mm -hmm. footage. And that was, I enjoyed that much, you know, that one a lot. So, um, Lonnie, what do you got? You know, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily go to a, a lot of channels. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy Andrew's stuff. Obviously I've known him a long time and I really enjoy his stuff. Um, you know, if I, if I'm going to go on YouTube and look at something, you know, I might just type in usually like kiss and then the year that I'm interested in, you know, I might just type in kiss 1992 or kiss 1996, 1997, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but so I, you know, that being said, I was doing that the other day, just like, you know, what am I missing? You know, are, are there some good, you know, channels out there? Um, and I found a couple that were, that were actually really good. There's this one called, and I'm trying to find it here on my phone while I'm doing this. It's just really, really top notch podcasting right here. <laughs> and it's called, it's called Space Men Menace Live. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of good stuff from, from, from um, different eras, like the, fir the first thing on his list is Kiss Live in Orlando, um, from like the Revenge era. You know, that, that's, of that's cool. <laughs> you know, Kiss Live in Knoxville, two thousand three. Well, that's a mm. fun tour. You know, it's a very unique tour, the two thousand three tour with Peter and with Tommy. And there's some stuff here from Stockholm in ninety seven. You know, some 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 reunion type footage, um, San Antonio ninety four. You know, some a good variety of stuff. Um, Cleveland 88, you know, full concerts even too. So just a wide, good variety, wide variety of, of things like, well, I'd, you know, it's an easy place to find um, things all at once. Cool. Yeah. I so uh, I think we might have someone trying to join us here. Yeah. Oh, hey. There you go. There you um, go. <laughs> so Andrew made it. Uh, we kind of left them sitting there, unfortunately. Yep. We're talking <laughs> Str about you. Stranded on the side of the road. They left me in the green room. See, the thing is, is, you know, I thought this was the Merv Griffiths show, so I was waiting in the green room. And no, no one had said my name. So I was just sitting there waiting. And, uh, but here I am. Yeah, so we started a couple things, but we're right on, actually, something that you might be interested in is, is oh. about the your go-to uh, YouTube channels. My go-to YouTube channels. Well, it's funny you mention that because they're, none of them are Kiss ones. Literally none of them. Okay, and that that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You know, I do. I watch a lot of uh, pop culture channels. I watch a lot of uh, action figure reviews and toy collecting and all that stuff. Because I'm a huge action figure collector, so a lot of the things I watch are are that like action figure reviews and news and stuff that's coming out. Uh, I also watch a ton of movie news. Like uh, I'm super into everything the Snyder Cut right now. For those of you that, that are watching this that don't know what that is, oh, uh, the, HBO, yeah, yeah the, the Zack Snyder version of the Justice League that's coming out on HBO Max in 2021. So I'm really, really excited about that. And that's kind of the stuff I watch. I There's a, there's a couple of channels that I watch, uh, the Cinemassacre channel, um, the Weekly Planet channel, and uh, Channel Awesome, which is uh, another channel. And, you know, I just watch, they do a lot of, like, old school, like, video store rental reviews and... Uh, it's cool. It's really cool. One of the one of the coolest things that I watched is one of the channels that, that I follow, and I can't remember which one it is. They went to the only open blockbuster video in, in the whole world. This I point. saw that, yeah. And and I thought it was so cool because I remember when block. I, I used to work at a mom and pop video store when I was a teenager, and I remember blockbuster opening down the street, and uh, it put us out of business. But then I was like, oh, well, let me check out what's going on here, and. Uh, you know, 
kids now they don't understand what it was like to go to the video store on the third if you were lucky you go there on a thursday night and then you have the new movie friday saturday bring it back sunday kids don't know that nowadays it was it was a fun it was a fun time to see what was there and sometimes you just rented something because the cover looked cool so mm-hmm. it, going off a little bit of a tangent but those are the kind of things <laughs> oh. that, that i like to watch i like uh one of the other things that I really love to watch, and this is not one specific channel, but I watch the channels that have like old 70s, 80s, and 90s commercials. I don't know what it is, especially <laughs> if they're like New York area commercials. It's like, oh, I remember when that was on, or I remember this. So those are the kind of things that I, I always watch. And then, of course, here and there, I'll put on a Kiss concert or two. But most of the stuff I watch there is non-Kiss. So, Andrew, you're a toy collector or action figure collector. I'm selling off these. Oh, so, Star Wars? I'm not sure. Yeah, it, for, for some reason I kept these uh, from when I was a kid. I have loads of them. And people are buying them for like a lot of money. Well, what do they do with them? Like this one. If I, Probably put well, them back together. Like, do, do, do they put the figure back on or yeah, something? Maybe. Well, some of, the, uh, some, of the, some of the action figure collectors, they keep either their stuff in the boxes or they just really like the box art for stuff. For example, um, I just pre-ordered a line of Spider-Man action figures that look like the 1990s, you know, card backs. I mean, the figures are not the figures are, are modern figures. Uh, but for me, I uh, I always tell people they're like, well, what do you do with your action figures? I go, well, I bring them home, I break them out of their plastic prisons, and then you know I pose them and I put them on a. I got this big bookcase next to my dresser in in my bedroom, and that's where all the action figures go. Uh, I just I enjoy taking them out of the box. So for me. I don't have nothing of mine is in the box. No, I take all my Star Wars toys out of the box too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because it's a turn on when the ladies come over that I have yeah, all my Star Wars. <laughs> when, when people walk into this, because I mean, this is this is the first show I'm doing for my for my new apartment. But oh when God. when people, I mean, you can see all the Kiss stuff back here now. Maybe not so much on the walls and stuff, but uh, when you when you when you walk into basically this room, uh, every vagina is dry within ten miles of this, <laughs> this room. But uh, but no, it's all good. I, I enjoy it. I, I, I enjoy it. So, uh, you know, COVID really ran, uh, ran rampant on everything collecting, and I'm just waiting on stuff. I, I pre-ordered stuff so long ago, I can't remember what I pre-ordered. But it shows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So I told you we'd go off the rails here on this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're talking about uh, Star Wars action figures. Action figures <laughs> which, speaking, which, speaking of action figures, Lonnie, you know, you being a Star Wars collector, if you log on to Target tomorrow morning, there's a Target exclusive Millennium Falcon that's over three feet long. Now, if I had a place to, if I had a place to put that, I would buy that. This is why I, I, I don't think my marriage can sustain me buying a three foot long oh, Millennium oh. Falcon. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's hanging over the bed. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And hang it from the ceiling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, babe, you want to go to hyperspace tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, did, you see, did, you see the did you see the Death Star they built on Lego Masters? Man, yes. that was a, an incredible. insane thing. Yeah, incredible. incredible. Just to keep the tangent going. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Cool. All right. Well, before can, we can, really can go. You want can to go really or, or you're a tra- or you're a tricky town. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Star Trek yeah, and Star Wars. Yeah, I, I know this. Yeah. You know this. All right. Well, yeah. now the secret's out. Star Wars for me. No Star Trek for me. Star Wars for me. All right. Um, so getting back on the, <laughs> we were on the subject, <laughs> the YouTube. Um, I'll just, as far as, as, as me, I, I usually, there's various ones that uh, I go to or just skip around. I usually do a search. Um, I do like the fact that there's that, you know, they showed that one, there's that one site now that every now and then, I can't remember the site name, but maybe you know it, Andrew, or one of you guys, uh, the one where they released the, the Roosevelt, uh, the full Roosevelt Stadium. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny you mentioned that, everyone's like, oh my god, Roosevelt Stadium is yeah, out, yeah, yeah. Houston 76 is out, and I'm like, man, I've had that concert complete for like 10 years. <laughs> right, so it's, it's out there it somewhere. Out, but... I'm like, oh, it's finally out. For some uh, reason, no, it wasn't think, on YouTube. Uh, I think, I think Talvis seventy seven. Yeah, that that's that right. Yeah. Um, just, just you reminded me of something because I had to put somebody in their place yesterday. Uh, somebody thought it would be funny if they posted one last time oh, on wow. their YouTube channel, and I was like, 
Okay, yeah. listen, I understand that some of this footage I don't own, but don't take my work. Put it on your channel and think you're going right. to steal views away from me. So, but he, he listen, I, I, I got to give the guy credit. He did take it down, and he did send me an apology video. So I was like, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's cool. I mean, I was, I'm totally cool with that. Let's move on, yeah. Really? Exactly. Paul Vist, Paul Vist 77, that's the guy who's writing the Partners in Crime books. Uh, you know, yes, uh, yes. Alex, uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, cool. Well, beyond this uh, YouTube stuff, uh, another topic that we were going to talk about, uh, I think, Andrew, your topic about uh, the new double platinum anniversary edition and, uh, you know, speculations of upcoming releases. Yeah, you know, what I thought was interesting is for a while they were doing anniversary editions on the anniversary of said album. I remember when the solo album one hit, that was a big deal because it was in September and it was it was a big celebration of the solo albums and they were going to re-release it. And that was the first one that kind of came out of the gate. They had this box set, they had all this yeah. this merch. And I feel like ever since that one, they've been getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. To the point where, like the the rock and roll over one came out, and it was just the vinyl. There wasn't there wasn't a cool there wasn't any, anything cool. I mean, yeah, they're they're putting out these record awards. Some of them look cool. Some of them use the wrong labels mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Some of them, you know, they they. I understand that double platinum is a double record, but why are there two records in that award? Just to charge us more money, I don't understand. Um, so <laughs> I just. I just I feel like I feel like it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And Ken, are you wearing uh, the Hot in the Shade T-shirt? Is that the one you're wearing? Oh no, I have a Hot in the Shade T-shirt, but I'm wearing the uh, the Stay at Home tours. Okay, okay. T-shirt. Uh, the T-shirts are getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, you, first of all, you'll be lucky if you even get the correct T-shirt when you order it, because there have been more multiple people, myself included. Where I ordered said anniversary T-shirt, I ordered the Hot and Shade T-shirt because I wanted it, and you just get the wrong T-shirt. You get like a generic Kiss Army T-shirt, and they make you send the, the piece of crap T-shirt back before they send you the right order. So uh, I said, "Well, no, I'm not doing that." I go, "You're going to send me the T-shirt, and then maybe I'll send this back to you." But first of all, it smells like piss and vinegar, so I'm not going to send it back to you. <laughs> and uh, they're these they're these heavyweight T-shirts that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what your guys' preference is, but I kind of like the softer T-shirts where it, yeah. just, it feels nicer. They wash a little better. I feel like they, they stay together a little longer. But you have these really harsh T-shirts that <laughs> they, they they just they don't last. And I'll wear them a couple times, and they're like I wear them to bed, or I wear them when I'm at the gym or, or working, or it's just they're just terrible quality stuff. So uh, you know, to, to to get back to the point, um, I, I was really disappointed in the double platinum one because. I, I think the picture just looks silly. I think the design of everything looks silly. I thought the Germans did it right when the Germans did theirs mm -hmm. last year. They yeah. reissued the German version. Yeah, uh, I thought it was great. I, I thought it was great. I thought it looked cool. I mean, yeah, it's going to be difficult to to do like a, a platinum record, but I thought the silver little design. I thought the, the silver were kind of like marble. I thought it looked great. It sounded great, and. Uh, the, a cool added touch is all the records were the backwards Z logo, like all the logos on the records were backwards Z. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this is cool. This is a unique thing that is is for the you know whatever was released in this country at the time. So I thought that it was just going to they were basically going to reissue the record that was in Kisteria. Now no. I understand I understand why they didn't do that because the Kisteria record is still Exclusive. valuable. Exclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, it would have been cool to do the same thing, the silver marble vinyl. Mm -hmm. It would have been cool to, I thought that would have been cool, if they really, really wanted to, to get our money, money, I thought they should have reissued it with four different labels, a Peter label, a Paul label, a Gene label, so on and so forth. I thought that would have been cool. And, and furthermore, if they really, really wanted to get our money, why not put the record out and then issue each record with a replica of Mylar poster? So you gotta buy the mm -hmm. same record four times for different posters. That see, if they had done that, would I have been would I have been pissed that I had to buy the record four times? Absolutely, but I would have done it. I you still would have done it exactly. Yeah, I would have done it, and I would have been like, okay, listen, this, all right, but this was cool, but I feel like they cheaped out on it. 
So what I'm hoping is I'm hoping the next record that they put out, I hope they do a live record next. I hope they do either a live one or a live two. Yeah, that'd be and nice. I hope they, I hope they do something cool. I hope they, I hope they do something. If they're obviously going to be double records. I hope they do something that's that's cool that is in tribute to the era that they came out in. I, I hope that maybe you know it's it, it's going to be like a you know if they do a live too. I hope it's like a red and blue marble or something like that, like mm-hmm. the like the logo on the front. Mm-hmm. I hope there's an extra poster included, and I hope the shirts are cool. Yeah. So, uh, but I was disappointed because Double Platinum is my favorite my favorite compilation and one of the first records I ever owned. So, um, and I think if you go back and listen to either Kiss My Wax or Kiss My Collectibles, when we had been talking, and maybe it was this show too, when we had been talking about the Soul Album reissue, I said, hey, if this was, I was on the fence for a long time when it had been released. But if either one of those, if that first record had been double platinum, it, I would have bought it instantly because I, I love that collection. But with what they put out now, I don't love it. Yeah. Don't yeah. Love it. No, and then the elephant in the room too is all the, is the fiasco with the Dress to Kill album now too. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. You know all these people yeah. that, that 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 ordered it that are not getting it. You know other people who said, oh, you know every other every other one of these has ended up on on Sound of Vinyl or You Discover Music. I'm just going to wait. Well, it never did. And you know a lot of these a lot of these people, whether they ordered it or not, are just screwed on this one. So it was very talking about something that was very poorly done. It's that. And. Uh, orders are getting canceled too. Orders Correct. are getting canceled, and oh, yeah. vinyl is showing up significantly damaged. And they say, "Sorry, we can't send you them because there's no stock." So here's your money back. Yeah, a lot of people that ordered on the first day, even, and I was one of those ones that ordered on the first day. And fortunately, I got mine, um, and it wasn't damaged. Luckily, too, somehow, uh, I was just lucky. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of damaged ones. I think they took higher orders, you know, more orders than obviously what were what was pressed. I don't know if that's COVID related to that record pressing business. I don't think it, I, that's a that's a probably a sorry excuse um, for that. Well, what was the previous one that came out? That it was unmasked, right? They did. And they no they did not do it. So there was no vinyl. record. There was no record for unmasked. There was all the tchotchkes with unmasked and the T-shirts yes. that fell yes. apart when you washed them one time. Right. Right. Yeah. And what was the what was the what was the record before that that they did? Uh, before, yeah. before Dress to Kill. Before well, well, it was before unmasked. What did they do right before unmasked? Does anybody Dress to Kill. Dress to Kill. Yeah, Dress to Kill was before. What's what right, before? So, so it was Dress to Kill. It was like, so it's been that long since Dress to Kill has been. Yeah, it was right when it was right in the middle of March, like when COVID was and it was, was de- shutting down the country. Delayed, yeah, delayed. So the what release. was right before Dress to Kill then? I want to say it was like like Hot in the Shade and, and that oh. right around around Christmas, like Hot in the Shade and Hotter Than Hell, right right around Christmas. Those okay. both came out the same day. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm speculating. And, and, and again, I have no inside information. I'm pure. This is pure speculation on my part. I think that the sales of Hotter Than Hell and Hot in the Shade were so poor mm-hmm. that when it came time to do the next one, because it had been a, it had been a while. I mean, for a while it was one a month, mm-hmm. and, and obviously the pandemic hit. So you know, take that into consideration too. But I think that the record sales have been so poor for that collection that when it came time to do the next one, they said, "Well, okay, this one there's." We're probably going to be sitting on stock forever on these two records. So when we do this next one, let's do it half. So we're not sitting on a bunch of stock, and and create a demand for it, so that way we can sell out of all this. And again, I'm pure speculation. Yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, see, next week is supposed to be the ship date next Monday or whatever for a double platinum stuff. And yeah. I did order the double platinum vinyl. Um, <laughs> I did do it. Yeah, uh, and it, though I'm with you, Andrew. I did not like the design. I thought they should have done okay. Yeah, if you're gonna do, you do one picture disc and do the other one a uh, colored vinyl, splattered vinyl, or regular black vinyl for all that matters. You know, um, so uh, they kind of they kind of screwed that one up. For you got the German one. The German one's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I went to get. That's really nice. This is how you do it. This yeah. this is how you do it, and. Let me show you. Those updates. went fast too. Those sold yeah. out pretty quick. Yeah, but it, but it came and it, one it came, 
and it and it was in good shape when I got it. This yeah. is how you do it. This is how you do it. Yeah. And and hold on, hold on. And and if you look at the Kiss logo, it's even the German even logo. the German type logo this there. You, yeah. This is how you do it. The uh, censored logo, as you can call it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. I know. It's all right. All right. So I, I understand <laughs> that this is not, this is, it's basically, they, they call it the gray. Yeah. Um, yeah. My USA hysteria is obviously the, the, the mint. But like. Well, that's pretty. I never opened mine. That's pretty. No, you haven't even opened yours? No, I never even opened it. Shame on you. This is this is how you do it, man. And, and I understand. And, and Daniel, you could probably speak to this. I know a lot of the Germans are sick of this logo. They, I mean, I don't love it, but this made it a different product. That I saw it and I go, oh, I got to get that. So. Yeah, Daniel's not a a vinyl collector. Uh, no, but but we we, we talked about the really really this re-releases uh, the last two episodes and I think we came to the conclusion that the official ones seldom surprise us in a good way but the bootleggers know how to do it but that's maybe right. because they have more to, to they can grab any photo any 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 soundboard recording and do whatever the hell they want uh, they can't really but but they do it and some of the stuff they released are is uh, really good looking, like uh, the ones we we talked about uh, when they released two bootleg concerts from the Dinosaur Tour. I don't remember the name of that uh, thing they released, but it looked beautiful. But it was like Lexington, Kentucky, or something like that. Maybe, maybe Andrew has it down there. Are, are you guys talking about this? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is oh, how oh, you do it. This is how oh, you do it. Open it. All right, you want to open it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to see it. We've just become uh, Kiss My my Wax. <laughs> the show yeah, is totally off the rails today. Wait, wait. I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm going to digress with my comment. Keep your comments <laughs> okay. to yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so first, and I'll just kind of go through. So first, um, you got three uh, uh, yep, tickets. Ticket stubs. And, and it looks like they use the same ticket. And they just kind of fudged around some of the numbers mm -hmm. as well as like the nights and all that. But which I'm okay with that because when you see these tickets next to actual tickets from '77, mm -hmm. you know that these are, are reproductions, and I'm okay with that. So if someone's yeah. going to reproduce something, I'm okay with them, you know, changing it a little bit so that way there are two unique items in there. Okay. So then you got uh, some some buttons in here. And you got a backstage pass, and you got uh, and whoever did this. <laughs> so it's a replica. I was there button. So the font. Oh, is, I was there. Yeah, but the font is a little bit different, and um, the the type of button is different. So again, nobody who has a real one, or no one who's seen it, is going to think this is a real button. Right. So there's some backstage passes and some other little alive two buttons in there. Uh, so then we got a DVD. Nothing really insane on here. There's some eight millimeter footage and mm -hmm. uh, playing the pipe and glory. Oh, so yeah. you, you've seen this stuff many, many times. Look at this was sure. just kind of yeah. just an extra little thing in there. And for all of you people that are on audio only, Andrew, you're not going to see this stuff, but you'll have to see it. The only way you see it is on YouTube. Okay. So, uh, so <laughs> when you take when you take everything out of the box, this is what the inside of the box looks okay. like. So Kiss I thought Army. that was cool. Too. Yeah, I thought that was cool. I'm like, that's a little, that's a nod to obviously the Kiss Army. It reminds me of the back of the the Lick It Up tour book and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the inside of Destroyer. Yep, Destroyer, exactly. So, um, I'm trying to like lay everything out like around me. Um, so they come to these four 12 by 12s and. Uh, these four 12 by 12 prints, I'll show each one of them. Now, it wouldn't be funny if if Kiss was actually making these bootlegs behind the scenes. Just How to, funny would that be? I mean, 
just, I, I just another idea. just another revenue stream. Exactly. Frame, we'll just put the, our bootlegs because, out ourselves. Yeah, I gotta frame these because check this out. That's a cool nice. picture. That's um, cool. Um, and they're they're um, they're definitely they're definitely shiny. So Gene. That's nice. That's another nice good picture. picture. Ace. Yeah. Cool. And our favorite, cat, our favorite cat, man. Oh yes. All right, but I'm That's not done. Cool. I'm not done. I'm yeah, not done. I'm sure. <laughs> I just I want to make sure nothing falls and it gets ruined, so I'm just like stacking everything up here. <clears throat> then there's like picture discs, right? Yes. So it's four records, and uh, it's it's only two shows. One of the shows is complete, so one night is remastered, one night is incomplete, and then the other night is non-remastered. So. Um, you know, it, 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 you say what you want about about the record, but uh, so each one has its own sleeve with its own guy on mm -hmm. it, and then each one is a picture disc. So you have like, so you have like the Paul picture disc, and then there's a group shot. Yeah. And cool. and what's cool about them is I don't know if this was done on purpose, but I feel like all of the graphics, like all of like the type, is not like mint sharp. It looks like it's a little bit blurry. Hmm. Which, if you guys remember, when I was doing The Greatest Show on Earth, the way that I got the film to kind of look old is I just made it slightly out of focus. Hey, you mm -hmm. don't want to make it too crisp. I feel like they did the same thing, so I feel like that's kind Maybe. of cool. Yeah. All right, so each I'm not going to show each picture disc. Because each, yeah, you each don't have to. Yeah. But the creme de la creme. This is a, a booklet. Yes. Yeah. So... I was there. Nice. In and, like a and destroyer just, shiny color. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean uh, double like, platinum. Double platinum. Like. I mean, like, it's it's chock full of pictures mm -hmm. and chock full of little pieces of information. Chock full of pieces of information and just all kinds of stuff. Minutia, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, that's so, cool. so for me, this, this, for me, this came out at, at exactly the right time i was all in on editing jonathan venno is calling me right now by the way no <laughs> it's julian's neighbor yeah i know yeah. i know i know, John, yeah. <laughs> I know so i'll talk to him later uh, this came out at the right time this was right around when i was working on the greatest show on earth so i was like obsessed with everything 1977 kiss so i saw that and i was like man i gotta have that i gotta have it Oh. And uh, and yeah, I got it. And uh, I don't buy many bootlegs. I mean, if Universal is watching, and I know they're not, why? You don't know why? That. Why don't they? <laughs> why do not? <laughs> I, I just don't understand why they can't do a box set like this. Uh, they're I I think they're too scared to do it, uh, and think it's not going to sell well. I don't know. Maybe maybe. I mean, we'll never, we'll never really know. I know the two things that they did put out, uh, Destroyer, Resurrected, which I'm probably going to listen to here tonight. Um, Love Gun. And, and Love, Love Gun, Gun Deluxe. They didn't Love sell. They, they just totally failed on those projects. So Yeah, yeah because there was nothing. There was no... They, they tried to... Yeah, they tried to keep it too, I don't know, cost-effective or cheap. It's, you know, they did as little as, I, as they could do on a project like that i think it was just kind of a quick and easy thing they didn't want to go the extra mile to put any extras in it or or try to you know re do some research uh and and gather some extra you know yeah. well uh, i i thought there was a, or whatever i thought there was a glimmer of hope for love gun deluxe because there was some cool demos and some stuff on there that was kind of cool uh, the book was kind of cool but i thought there could have been more yeah, that felt kind of cheap, but, but I think it was a great idea to involve Bob Baskin. I was hoping for a bit more from from, from, from him, but that was a good thing they did. They haven't done, done that previously. Uh, and they uh, brought out Ace's old solo, but that was about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's not enough. No. But uh, that bootleg looks really cool. Man. It does look cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's the way to go. If you're going to do yeah. it, so... Beyond that, I don't know. Um, hey man, check it out. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job. 
All right, well, that bums me out that Kiss doesn't do that or Universal, but whatever. Um, let's go on to the next topic that we got. Because <laughs> we can spend forever on that one. Yeah, sorry, I mean, sorry to be a downer, but uh, I, I guess to, to, to put an end to that topic, uh, the next thing I hope that they do is either a live or a live tune. Well, I think we have a good chance with with a live the forty fifth yeah, anniversary of a live, of a live this be, yeah. with forty fifth anniversary of a live this fall. I think stands a good chance, and it'll be interesting to see how they do it. If they screw cause that up, they because the recent <laughs> ones have been, and they probably will because the recent ones have been, like yeah. Andrew said, just progressively getting worse. Unfortunately, yeah. don't screw that up. Um, all right, um, another topic we we, we have. Uh, I think that's another Daniel one uh, about your your kiss faq posts you know as far back as possible um you know oh, julian got can julian you, went on a rant and like deleted the board at one point so like all of our <laughs> yeah i couldn't find i could only find a few uh early ones from or for me i could go back as far as posts going back as far as 2009 i saw a few posts that i had on there um and, and have my views changed regarding those topics or posts um and and for me i'll I'll tell you mine one was about and it's kind of funny because we're just talking about this other subject uh it was a subject called kiss and t-rex deluxe editions and supposedly uh, at that time t-rex they were putting out a t-rex electro uh, electric warrior album out and it was going to be a a two cd and dvd package i i thought i think i responded to something like you know yeah that'd be great if kiss would do that something like that for i forget whatever album but uh just do it but Any, uh, they've never they've never done it and then it's, it's been you know 11 years since then another topic that uh was about no oh, this is kind of funny too uh because andrew's here um she, <laughs> It was about Future Kiss, a uh, 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 topic about Future Kiss, and I said something about, uh, are they, you know, because of uh, Mr. Speed, Ooh. was that the mini, go- the mini golf uh, thing, right, that contest or whatever? I, I said something like, uh, is, oh, is this uh, Kiss's attempt to try to, you know, kind of audition or prepare for Kiss 2.0? Um, that was my thinking back then Uh, (laughs) and the last the other third one that i uh, looked at was oh how heavy do you want monster to be the monster album Mm -hmm. and i know i said that this is what i said i said i i wanted it uh like rock and roll over uh sound with you know produced like revenge or something like that across across between rock and roll over and yeah. revenge that's what the sound i i would have wanted for monster mm-hmm. so that would have been something yeah yeah so uh you guys lonnie lonnie no da- daniel you go ahead since you have... well um i think it was kind of fun to see that you uh, you might think you you're talking about something now that you haven't been talking about and then you find out that you talk about the exact same thing 10 years ago Kinda, That's true too. <laughs> it's kind of strange, but uh, I I looked through my posts as well, and I ca- got back as long as far as 2009 as well, and uh, I saw some some posts where I have ranked the albums, and mm. there have been some changes actually in the yeah. last ten years. Like Asylum has moved up, and some of the other albums have moved down. So some things have changed. And uh, I looked at one of my posts uh, regarding the uh, monster cover, the anticipation for the cover. Mm-hmm. That was kind of a fun thread. People were talking about all kinds of stuff. And then someone said, um, I think they'll just make a simple group photo and put an ugly, you know, monster logotype uh, up front. And that's what we, we got. So that's that what guy we was got. exactly right. But there were all kinds of stuff, and pictures and photos. and People did things on, on oh, the yeah. Photoshop, really cool covers, but we didn't get any of, of that. And uh, the final thing I'll say about this topic is uh, I, I looked at a post regarding um, Gene Solitor, if you remember, 
or so that where he went uh, went with some stars, stars in big quotation marks. Oh yeah, marks. to South America. Right. Um, he wore the and, wig. Uh, right. The yeah. Revenge. Actually, he kind of dressed like the, Revenge Gene. Yeah. yeah. Revenge like a Gene. Fat revenge Gene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, a little bit fat. But uh, it was kind of fun to read what people said. They, the, most people were like surprised how well he uh, he like uh, was on stage. He he commanded the stage, and mm -hmm. in comparison, Sebastian Bach was also on this tour, and he is a great frontman. But next to Gene, he kind of he played, uh, you know, second how fiddle. do you say, second fiddle? Yeah. <laughs> so, so so Gene was, Gene showed that he could do it by himself. And uh, I think some of the clips from that tour, he, he, he looks really cool. And he has some sort of charisma and uh, stage uh, presence that's uh, hard to match. Sebastian Bach, he, he, he was nowhere near. Uh, yeah. And I, I thought it would be the other, other way around. So it was kind of cool to read about that once again. I, I had almost forgot about that tour, but uh, uh, it, was, it, it was a good tour. And uh, yeah. he, he did it once again now a few years back, and it, that was just great to be be watching Gene with doing his uh, the old classics with his band. That was uh, so great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I remember that. Um, Lonnie, what did, did you go back and look at anything? I did. Find anything? And that's hard. To, first of all. Doing that search, it makes you yeah. wait 90 seconds. You're like, oh, the first time you, you it's, have to it's wait difficult. 90 seconds. But if you try it again, yeah. you can see it's counted down 10 seconds. I'm like, why is it that? I have to complain to Julian about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, what is going on good. with that? You have to complain to the admin about that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but no, it, you know, it's like anything, it's different. It's, it's different to look at anything and see how your opinions have changed over time. Mm -hmm. um, even even if it's regarding Kiss or, or you know one of your favorite topics, so your opinion still evolves over time, and you know you certain you like certain things more than others as as maybe as you, as you mature and, and you know maybe you become a little wiser and things like that. So um, I, I wish I wish I could look back on like some of my really old um, FAQ topics from before Julian took it down. <laughs> Um, and like read what like 18 year old Lonnie was saying back in 1998 oh, about the Psycho Circus and things like that and like how amazing I thought it sounded um, and how I, I like that record still and how I was yelling how at Ace people, was so good and how I was time. yelling at people who, who were saying no it's not the original four no it really is the original four <laughs> you guys are crazy not me you know that's the kind of stuff I could wish I wish I could really go back and read like so naive will that, will that be like the Kiss Asylum that would be a yeah. like now that, yeah, exactly now that would be really go back cool. on oh, wow. any board it would be yeah. the kiss asylum board would be really fun like mm -hmm. like i'm we're all of us are really misinformed and we all have really different opinions and than what's really factual or that we know now so oh yeah i think that would be really fun to look back on but that's cool yeah. andrew did you go back and look at any or yeah what i thought was cool when is you're uh, 10 years I, old or well like yeah what was really funny is like I was I was way more combative before people knew who I was. I was like I'm just on the spin. No one knows who I am. Fuck you. So like I was I was able to be to to kind of you know go against the grid a little bit more when people had no idea who I was. Like 2007, you know. But uh, but at the same time, um, I don't think my opinions have have really changed. You know, I still really enjoy this. And uh, I always kind of posted about the same things. I always posted about you know, video collecting, posted about vinyl collecting, and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. I never really got into the, the Vinnie Vincent Steve Kiss arguments or mm -hmm. Eric Singer shouldn't be in the makeup. I never really got into those, those arguments. And, and then obviously there was like a cavalcade of posts about the greatest show on earth. So I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Something about cool. something about the guy who developed it. I really don't. Yeah. I, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, I, I, hey, yeah. hey, you know, I, I do want to tell you a, a funny story of, about this. Um, I I had it I had it on. I have a TV at work, and I just keep like movies or whatever on that. And I had it on the other day, and it, but it was paused because I was taking a couple phone calls, and then it was paused for whatever reason. Someone came in, and they go, "Oh, is this that movie with Hugh Jackman?" And I was like with Hugh Jackman. They're like, yeah, The Greatest Showman. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is the, this, 
this is the greatest. We're done. We're done here. We just so they <laughs> thought that they thought that the greatest show on earth was the greatest show. Oh, in, oh my Jack. god! So <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a chuckle. That. That's funny. Um, <laughs> you Jackman. Um, all right. Well, uh, just one more thing on that subject is um, even from week to week, day to day, my 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 ideas of certain things about Kiss change from day to day, even you know rankings of albums. And so, <clears throat> speaking of rankings of albums, um, there was this one topic on the board, you know, last week or a week before about uh, there's a couple of them but one of them was the first six studio albums uh we we all know what they are but uh how would you you know rank them uh from you know one being the best and and six of course being the lowest you know not necessarily bad or worse or whatever but just lowest in the ranking um so daniel what do you think on the first six albums how do you rank them First off, it was really hard, I think, to, to rank them. Uh, what criteria yeah. should I use and so on. But uh, uh, in sixth place and last, I had Love Gun. Um, hmm. I do feel that it was the start of uh, Kiss losing sight of who they were. There are a few stinkers on there, like Then She Kissed Me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. However, there are also a few real classics, like I Stole Your Love and Love Gun. So, uh, but very hard uh, competition, so it ended up in, in, in sixth place. And in fifth, I actually had the, the, the first album. And sort of the same argument. Uh, of course, there are a lot of classics. I don't really like the sound of the album. Um, and you have Love Theme and Kiss and Time on there as well. So uh, that kind of brings it down a little bit. And then in fourth place, Harder Than Hell. Mm -hmm. Great album, but once again, the sound is kind of, you know, I, I really don't like the sound of that yeah, album, really. even though it has, it has some of my favorites of all time, like Parasite and stuff like that. So, And then we move on to the final three, and in third place, I had Dress to Kill. Uh, I always like Dress to Kill. I think it's a fun album. It's more of a pop album, maybe, but uh, uh, I think it's you can listen to it from the first song to the last song and, and enjoy all of them. Mm -hmm. And then in second place, I have Mark's favorite album, Destroyer. Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, you can say whatever you want about Kiss uh, sounding different and stuff, but still you have Detroit, Rock City, God of Thunder, Shout It Out Loud. I mean, it's hard to argue with those songs. And my favorite has to be Rock and Roll Over. I like everything from the production to the songs, and I think both Ian and Paul have some great stuff there. And... Uh, my favorite album from the 70s yeah okay yeah so i mean there's no right or wrong i mean there's a certain everyone yeah. has a different little taste of each other it'll be interesting to hear yeah yeah so lonnie what did, what did you come up with you know it, it's really tough to to rank these and to put yeah. one of these six albums in last place because they're they're so good i feel like i'm doing a disrespect to put any one of these albums in in ranking than the last, but you know, having doing so, the, the number six to me, at least today, because you could ask me the same question again tomorrow, and I might have a completely different ranking of, the, of these six albums. But number six to me would be Hotter Than Hell, and probably just because of the production at the end of the day, that it could have been so much more and so much better had the production on there been um, to a better standard. Um, mm -hmm. Five is five is Love Gun. For, for no reason other than maybe it's a little watered down by that point. Um, four is the original album. And the only reason it's number four is because it has to compete with Destroyer at three, which has so many great classic Kiss songs on there. You know, whether Mark, you know, likes Bob Ezra or not, you can't argue with the number of Kiss classics that appear on Destroyer. And, you know, when the reunion tour came, how they basically pl they played six of the nine songs on Destroyer every single night because you know that is that's destroyers the reason why so many people are in the kiss and two for me is dress to kill just i love dress to kill um and it's very it's very poppy and and catchy and i, I and those are the songs that i love and and one is rock and roll over which i'm sure is going to be ken's number one as well just because 
rock and roll over start to finish and the production on there was just incredible it's how kiss should sound on every, kiss in the 70s should have sounded on every studio recording yeah that's a cool that's a good list um i understand your thinking on on some of that especially on the sound of the or production on some of the albums and it's the only reason why higher than hell is so low is because I, I love the songs on higher than hell don't get yeah. me wrong you know i you know yeah. i love got to choose is one of my favorite kiss songs but yeah well, if i listen to got to choose i don't listen to the version on higher than hell i listen to the version on kiss alive or mtv or mtv, yeah. or MTV or Unplugged. Unplugged. exactly right. correct all right well andrew what do you got for you you know for me it's it's going to be rock and roll over at number one and dress to kill at number two for the same reasons that that Lonnie said, you know, the production on both of those records are so strong. The songs, uh, to me, are very honest. They had to they had to record Dress to Kill, especially at a breakneck speed because they needed to put another album out to make some royalty money on those records. Of course, we know the royalty payments never came years later. But um, those are those are my go-to records all the time, and, and that's why I was so disappointed going back to our previous discussion why those. Uh, anniversary releases of both those records were kind of eh, spotty at best. So uh, it's it's Rock and Roll Over at number one, Dress to Kill at number two, and then you could literally take the other four, just put them in a blender, and just a- any given day they could be any different way. So, But hmm. for me, it's always Dress to Kill and Rock and Roll Over are, are the top two, and then everything else after that. And that's not, to, that's not a sleight of hand at everything else. It's just those two are the they're the best sounding Kiss records in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> For me, and I think I think you're going to think that Mark Marcus Almighty wrote my list, maybe. <laughs> 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 because I put... Here comes a shot at Destroyer from another Here we go, one. yeah. Uh, I put Destroyer <laughs> at, at number six. Um, mm-hmm. Mainly, I think it is because of the production on that one. Uh, I don't think it's raw enough. I think it's just too slick and the guitars are too low. Um, it's just not in your face. Uh, though I love Detroit Rock City and King of the Nighttime World and Great God expectations. Of, you know, uh, though I think God of Thunder is too slow and plodding on that album, but uh, I like it on live too. Um, but, uh, and Shout Out Loud, I love that song. That's probably the best, my favorite song on that album tell you the truth uh or detroit city but anyway that's part of the reason that that's so low and then next one up is hotter than hell at five uh and that is because there's a few songs on there that i think eh, they're okay uh but most of it's good but it's again it's another production issue on that one uh, for me even though it has a lot of you know classics and then number four is love gun um it's kind of a mix of, yeah, they're on. There's you could t- see that the the cohesiveness is starting to go away, especially in the t- different types of songs being, you know, Gene and and Paul have always been different, but these are they're really contrasting more than ever on that album. And then you got Hooligan, and uh, which is not one of I don't think Peter's best, you know songs um then of course the throw on there the then she kissed me so yeah and then uh number three dress to kill which i think is a great pretty good album uh there's a couple of weaker songs on more on the first side of that album um and i think jeans could have been better and they yeah. there's some souls missing on it but for for the most part it's a great it's a pretty clean produced album. It's an, it's well done and a lot of good music on it. So the next one I got at number two is Kiss, the first album. Uh, I think the production is a lot better than Hotter and Hell is, even though the same guys produced both of those albums. Uh, <laughs> it, this one was produced a lot better. It wasn't perfectly produced, but it has great classic the classic songs they play almost all of this all those songs in the concert most of them or a lot of them uh you know so that one always ranks high for me um and then of course yeah like he said daniel rock and roll over uh is my number one and it's always been pretty much my number one uh the first album that i heard a track off of 
uh, first one I heard on vinyl ever. It was rock. It was rock and roll over. Um, but it wasn't my first purchase. It was alive too. But uh, it was the thing. It's what got it all started for me. So as it should. As it should. As it should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rock roll over number one for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, and there's, I'm sure that, you know, no, there's no right or wrong answer on this. There's a lot of no, no. different tastes or when people, you know, got into the group and, yeah, yeah. and so on. So, it, you know, it is what it is. And so I think uh, at this point, we're going to wrap up this show, this, this anarchist takeover. <laughs> uh, you'll probably be happy to have Julian back next week hosting as usual because he's the he's the, the host with the most host with the most knowledge kiss knowledge i think um a lot more than i have uh, <laughs> but uh you know let us know out there uh your rankings i think you have on the board at least for that i've seen that topic out there but some of the other subjects about you know your your go-to uh, youtube kiss channels and uh about the we talked a lot about the you know the double platinum anniversary and so on and and then the uh you know the old posts you know do you guys have some old posts that uh you have and you've changed your mind on or or you wish you'd never said <laughs> what you said on there <laughs> you know or did you, did you get banned for saying something on there by julian <laughs> um, so <laughs> What, what's what your what's be? your original name on the Kiss FX? Yeah, yeah. What was your before, before you changed time? it to another one? <laughs> after you were banned or before you were banned? Yeah. So so yeah. So let us know. And so you can check us out as usual on YouTube and and uh, Apple and and so on all the outlets out there. And uh, we thank you for you know joining us again. And uh, from Lonnie Andrew. Daniel and myself. Thanks for watching. See ya. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the Kiss FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.